Now, if by offering to do it for free, you retain complete creative control over the project and you reduce all the barriers because people aren't going to say no to free. So when it comes to getting your first client, you've got to be aware of your ability in, and your kind of rank in the marketplace. Because if you're starting out early on, then it's not really fair for you to be sort of commanding a price to learn on the job. So my advice to anyone is to take that first job and do it for free. Now, the way I would also get this is I would ask around. So I would look in my local network, my you know friends and family and colleagues, and see if there's anyone who might need help with what I want to do. And the most crucial thing to make your life easier is you need to do two things. You need to pick what your specialist offering is. So this might be branding or photography or graphic design or web design or social media content. It's not all of them. Okay, you need to pick one. And then you need to also pick an industry that you want to work for. So this might be hospitality, it might be fitness, it might be sports, it might be lifestyle, it might be, you know, legal, it doesn't matter. But the combination of overlapping one specialism with one industry makes you much, much easier to remember. And if you don't believe me, next time you go to a networking event, and you hear someone say, I do graphic design, branding, social media, Facebook ads, web design, and all of this, you will glaze over as they talk about it. And because they offer everything, they have no value and interest to you. And therefore, you're going to forget them. If we say we do branding for restaurants, then whenever someone remembers that, and they're talking to someone who owns a restaurant or needs branding, we're much more likely to pop up in our heads. And the way to think of it is, if I pick five ping pong balls, and I threw them all at once at you, you would drop all five, you'd never catch them. But if I pick one, and I throw it like that, you would catch it every time. And this is the way it works with our brains. For us to be remembered, people need to be able to pigeonhole us and file them up. You know, they want to file us in their brain so we're easy to remember. So if you're uh, you're Thad, the branding guy who works in restaurants, so that stays in their brain better than you're the guy who does everything for everyone and I can't even remember what you do. So that's the first thing. Once you do that, by picking your specialism and your industry, it narrows your focus of attention and it makes it much easier to get to know the key people within that industry. And this is not forever because if you offer branding to start with, and then you build a good relationship with a client, you can always always offer social media graphics or, you know, brochure design or web design afterwards, if that's what you do, but always lead with one. So what I would do is I'd go, right, I'm going to lead with one. And I'm going to find people who own restaurants who might need new branding. And I'm going to approach them and say, would you mind if I did a rebrand of your restaurant for free? Now, if by offering to do it for free, you retain complete creative control over the project. And you reduce all the barriers because people aren't going to say no to free. So this way, you um, eliminate things like timelines, expectations, pressure. And you can actually use this as an experiment to learn and develop. So all those books you've been reading, all those videos you've been watching and doing nothing with the information, now's your chance to apply it. And you can actually start to ask these, this client all the questions you should be asking to learn more about them and their business and particularly the industry. So once you do this and the more information you gather, the better the outcome is going to be. That's natural. It, it's, it's like ingredients. You know, the better quality ingredients, the more of them you've got to pick from, the more range of dishes you can produce and the better quality of those dishes. So the more information you gather, the better. When you deliver the project, this is what happens. You're going to deliver something which is great and it's going to be a case study. So it's going to be a project which is going to be a rebrand of a restaurant and it's going to be everything. So you're going to learn everything. The client's going to be kind of patient with you. They're going to help you. They're going to give you suggestions. At the end of it, you'll have a really good case study. You'll get great testimonials and you have loads of industry experience. And the industry experience is what's going to set you apart. Because when you go to your next potential client and say, could I do a rebrand of your restaurant? Then what's the first thing they're going to want to know? Have you done this before for anyone else like me? And if you can say, yeah, here's a case study. Here's a testimonial. You can speak to the client. They'll tell you how good I was. And also, I know what it's like to work in, your rest in, in the hospitality industry. So when you have the conversation, and instead of saying, yeah, I can help you get more customers, when you know deep down in restaurants, the problem isn't always customers. It's usually staff and hiring and firing good quality staff and chefs turning up on time and suppliers delivering it's all that inner knowledge that breaks down all the resistance and all the barriers. And now the restaurant owner is relieved because he's like, I don't need to explain this to you. You get it. 
So the chance of you landing your second job are much easier because you've got proof from the first job that you can deliver. So I would do that again and I would do it a third time and I would do three free projects to build a little portfolio full of great case studies, great testimony and great understanding. And this is the gold. This is the bit because if you stick in that industry, all of those people, they all go to the same events. They all follow the same people because, again, it's a small industry. So if now you go to an event like an expo or a networking event specifically for restaurant owners and you stand up and say, I do branding for restaurants and I've worked with these clients. If you'd like to talk to me about branding or see my portfolio, talk to me afterwards. You're in a room of maybe 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 potential clients and you serve only them. And you know what people will respond? They will love it because they've always come across the guy that does everything for everyone. And all they want, all we only want, is someone who does what we want, who understands our problems. In the same way that my gardener, it can't fix my electrics, and I don't want a painter trying to operate on my knee. I want a specialist for the job who has got experience, a track record of success, testimonials, and evidence he's done it. And that's what you're going to get by doing it for free. So do the three free projects doing your chosen specialism in an industry that you love. Then... That's when you can start to charge because you've had the experience and the track record. And and with every project you do, you put your price up by 50%. And eventually the market will say, you've hit your limit. I'm not going to pay more than that because you'll start to get no's. Then you need to understand, okay, how do I go beyond this? What do I need to learn or what skills or ability do I need to deliver upon in order to keep my trajectory going up so I can charge more? And that's when you would approach maybe a top agency and say, can I, you know, come and intern with you for six months just to learn or whatever it might be. But the way you start to get clients is to absolutely be humble enough to do it for free to get the experience to justify being paid later down the line. 